I thought I'd come out of hiding for a little bit anyway and not use a video toy. Uh, I've been feeling rather uninspired. It's amazing, even though we are not the body. Uh, when the body's having challenges and difficulties, somehow we might as well be. I mean, it really, I don't know. Um, okay. I've got two different approaches to the idea that we're living in uh, something like a computer simulation. I'm just going to share some videos with you, uh, maybe in the next couple of journals. Of course, I don't know what's going to come out when I turn the camera on and open my mouth. You know that by now. But um, I do have, you know, about eight videos that Sometimes when I see one, I think, gee, I'd love to share this. So, um, and these aren't real long videos either. Actually, um, this is a, a two-part video. Each part is about 15 minutes. And, um, what's it? well, it's got different names for the parts. You can get in there and see it. It's well done. Michio Kaku is, is one of the speakers. And the interesting thing about it is that, uh, let me give you the title, Journey to the Fifth Dimension, As Above, So Below. And so you're not thinking that you're going to be walking into some kind of a, maybe we live in a uh, simulated uh, reality, quote unquote. But that's the title for the first one, part one. And then um, part two has its own title. It's still a uh, journey to the fifth dimension, but the rest of this title is Superstring Theory and the Archonic, as in Archons, the Archonic Simulated Universe. And uh, it's food for thought. And then the other link I'm giving you is um, a little text exploration of the idea of living in a simulation. Now, one thing we need to do, folks, is to keep remembering that we are not these bodies. Okay? Uh, we know that each atom is 99 point, a whole bunch of nines, empty. And so right off we know absolutely nothing is what it appears to be because if, if things were so empty we would be walking through walls and indeed through each other and we don't tend to do that now there are some in Tibet and other places uh, mostly in Asia where strange kind of things go on like that and it's possible to achieve levels of mastery where these kind of things can happen. And that would be more of a reality, if you will, than this seemingly solid one. So life's a mystery, and I don't have a problem with that. I don't mind it being a, a mystery pretty much forever. I mean, you know, we'll be enlightened when we're enlightened about this, that, or the other. And until then, uh, let's not let anything interfere with enjoying our now. You know, let's not drive ourselves crazy. But I love big ideas, uh, kind of wild ideas, and being truly open-minded. It's my recreation, I guess. Uh, I've got Sagittarius uh, rising, which uh, likely has something to do with that. And, uh, okay, where am I going from here? So we're not the body and the body's not the body either because it's all those atoms are empty so how can it you know I mean everything's pretty weird so uh, have some fun with it you know don't let anything get you too upset and if you get upset push pause and stop and look at that 
Anytime we get upset, anytime something bothers us, you can darn well bet the cause of that is inside of you. It's not anything in the outside world because there is, well, anyway, all right, there is no outside world. That's an illusion. Everything is, is inside of you. Everything is inside of everything else. You know, it's, it's the uh, hologram kind of a thing. And it's all fractal and it's all tightly interconnected, even though we have this illusion of separation. So could it be a, a, a sin kind of a thing? I guess so. I mean, you know, um, who's pushing the buttons? Who's running things? We are in our inmost nature. When you're getting closer to who and what we really are, we are divine. And so we're capable of, of running a simulation, at least as con certainly as concerns our part of this quote unquote reality. Remember, you're not the body. You're not even in the body. The body is in you. We've got a lot of gardening work in our garden of belief. Uh, to do in order to break out of the box, to break out of the matrix. And once we shovel some good dirt in and get some good ideas planted and pull the damn weeds, which is all the programming that we've received and we've been given, we've been handed this whole concept of reality that supposedly is real and everybody believes in it. It's in the textbooks. And when you're waking up, at least it's been my experience in waking up that I find there's none of it that's true. It's all bunk. Every bit of it. I mean, even the idea of who's being worshipped as God is highly questionable. It really is. And that was maybe my biggest shock. After coming up with the idea, going back and looking at over the Old Testament again, especially, and seeing, oh my God, that being is, is just not divine. Uh, all the wars and all the killing and the jealousy and the anger and the nonsense. So, okay, that doesn't mean there's not a God. Totally not. I'm a firm believer in God, only I call it source to get away from all the baggage that the word God carries. Uh, the best explication, I think, of the word God is uh, to make it a, I forget what they call it, uh, acronym for the geometry of divinity, you know, and maybe angels are really angles in the consciousness of God. We need to be really open and once we get a lot of weeds pulled, and not even necessarily a lot, but if we can get some of the right ones pulled, it gives us room to explore with no fear. I was also tremendously surprised to find out how much of fear is built into the reality that we were given that were these little bitty things, you know, that came up from goo, primordial goo, or that developed from apes or, or whatever, and that everything in the past is totally primitive. I mean, every bit of this is, is just wrong on the face of it. Uh, there have been civilizations far more advanced than where we are now that existed right here on planet Earth a lot longer ago than they're wanting to tell you about. If if we could get into the Vatican Library and such places, uh, the truth has been hidden from us. It's either been burned or, or destroyed in some way or, or taken, uh, bought, whatever, and put where no one can get to it. Uh, no one of the little people, that is. And so, is it a simulation? I don't know. It's a fun idea to play with. And it's when we play with a new idea like this, what I enjoy in it is that when I come on something, if it upsets me in any way, to me that's awesome. Because what's more priceless than self-knowledge? 
not a lot. There are some things, but not a lot. And so if I can find something that upsets or bothers me in some way, then I have a new opportunity to look inside and see, hey, what's going on there? And why does that bother me? And then you look for the cause of it, and then you look for the cause of that, and, in, you know, and, and the net result is that you're pulling some weeds in the way that you used to think things worked. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's a, a good indication if ideas tend to upset you that you're living in your mind and you're identified with it. That's like these people that if you challenge an idea of theirs and they get upset, that's evidence of being identified with their mind because they feel challenged. You didn't challenge them. You just want to have a talk about this idea of theirs. A lot of people aren't at the stage yet. They still have too much fear on board to be able to do that comfortably. So I don't suggest forcing anyone into anything. We're all also um, beautiful, dignified beings worthy of tremendous respect reverence even. I mean, we're God clothed in flesh walking around here. And so I know a lot of my ideas uh, will push your buttons. Or maybe they won't. But for a lot of people, they will. At least some of them. And I'm not saying I believe that we live in a simulation. I'm saying it's a fun idea to explore and uh, get to know yourself while you're at it. Okay, what else do I have to share? It's been hard, but you've heard enough about that from me. I don't feel the need to go on any more about it. Oh, I will tell you one thing, and maybe it'll make some of you laugh. Uh, I've been sleeping 14-hour uh, nights. Uh, I have been working on allowing myself to just be. And it seems for now that the body is wanting that much rest. So why not? By God's grace, I live in a situation where I'm free to do that. And so I just want to say anything that you can do to lighten up on yourself and trust yourself. Trust your inner self. You know, look at your intuition. Try to let yourself be guided more by your, it's not your feelings so much as it is your intuitions. Your, I mean it's feelings, but it's not emotions. Your senses of things uh, will take you closer to divinity and to your higher self than your mind will. Uh, we're multifaceted, multidimensional beings that are just grand and we're so very powerful that because we were convinced that we're small and worthless and, and nothing and we believed it, that we've actually created a reality around that. And so if you think what we have these days that supposedly reality in the world sucks. That's a word I n once upon a time I never would have used, but it's that bad, you know, it's just terrible. Then maybe consider your part in creating it because all any of us can do is our part. Take care of self and be in now. And if, if you'll do that, it gets rid of most things that are upsetting because they generally involve others, not just self. And they generally involve time and not just now. And so this is a way of peace that you can walk. You can literally have peace in the midst of whatever. There are those, believe it or not, there really are, who when there would be battles, uh, these were like 
uh, yogis would go out into the midst of the battle and sit down and meditate. Now, obviously, it was a really high sort of initiation. It's not something uh, the beginner would tackle, but it just helps to remember you're not the body and you can't die. It's not a possibility. Now, I don't suggest anybody going out and doing that. I really don't. I wouldn't do anything even like bungee jumping off buildings or or, or this uh, paragliding or those kind of things because it's risky. I don't even like riding a motorcycle because it's risky and I like the body and I want to stay in it a good long while yet. And so that's my take on things. But it's fun to find these people uh, There's a that, that will do this. There's a a set of books, I think it's in five volumes, uh, maybe six. I think it's called The Wisdom of the Masters of the Far East, where we sent uh, a group of scientists, got together, and went to the Far East because they wanted to disprove uh, the nonsense that they'd heard about uh, that the yogis were able to do the kind of things that they could accomplish, you know, flying through the air in the lotus posture and, and just, you know, precipitating things and, and all that sort of thing. And so they went to the Far East and they got people willing to share with them and let them see and examine and photograph and do what they wanted to do. Uh, it's a good little set of books. It might even be online. I haven't looked for it. I mean, this idea just came to me. Um, it's a good read. The telling thing is that not all of the scientists went back. A good number of them stayed and became disciples under some of these uh, Asian teachers. So this is good. When you set out to disprove something, go for it absolutely go for it. A lot of times, if, if you're sufficiently open and reasonable, you'll find yourself shifting your whole reality because of it. Okay. Good day then. Namaste.